Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to take care of some practice problems involving graphing quadratic functions uh, using the quadratic formulas for vertex and intercept form. All right, so the first two questions, uh, we have to sum some uh, values based on what we find in the graph. So it says, provide the sum of the following values for the given function. If the graph opens up, add 1, down, add 2. If the graph is wider than the parent function, y is equal to x squared, add 1. Narrower, add 2. The same with add 3. Find the sum of the coordinates of, for the vertex, uh, and then add them together. And the value of the y-intercept. Okay, so let's take care of the first problem. I have a quadratic function in vertex form. I know the a value is 1. It's not stated, but I have a 1 here. So I know that the graph, and it's positive, I know that the graph opens up. So I'm going to say that's a plus 1. So that's the first question. And then <clears throat> I'm going to find out if the graph is wider, narrower, or the same width. So if the absolute value of a, which is this value here, is 1, then it's going to be the same width. So I'm going to add plus 3. The sum of the coordinates of the vertex. Well, it's great that we have the vertex form because it gives us the vertex. I have, remember, I need to change the sign um, in the parentheses. So it's going to be plus 3, 2. So my vertex is 3, 2. And the sum is going to be 5, so I'm going to add 5 to this value. And then I'm going to find the y-intercept. So you have to be careful in this case because we're using the vertex form. In the standard form, y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. The y-intercept is 0c. But in this case, we're in the vertex form. The c value is not uh, going to be 2. So there are two ways that we can do this. <clears throat> The first way is to figure out just visually what the graph looks like in the y-intercept and what's going on with the x-value. So if I draw my x-y-axis, when the graph crosses the y-axis, I know the value of x is going to be equal to 0. So I can figure out what uh, the y-intercept is by plugging in 0 for x. So I have y is equal to 0 minus 3 squared plus 2 which is equal to 11. So I can use that value of plus 11, or I can rewrite this quadratic uh, in standard form. So I have x minus 3 squared plus 2. So it'd be y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 2, which is the same as y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 11. And here I have my c value. So I can say that, again, my y-intercept is going to be 0, 11. And that's what I found by plugging in 0 for x. So now I take a total of all these values. I have 11 plus 5 is 16 plus 4 is equal to 20. So the answer to my question for number 1 is going to be 20. Okay, so let's tackle the second problem. I'm going to erase all this. And we're going to go to the second problem. <clears throat> and the second problem, uh, also in vertex form, we're going to find out if the graph opens up or down. And we see the a value is going to be 4. The absolute value of the a value is greater than 1. So we're going to say, I'm sorry, it's positive. So it's going to be, uh, and also greater than 1. It's a positive value, so it's going to be open up. It's The absolute value of a is greater than 1. So it's going to be a narrower graph. So we add 2. The sum of the coordinates of the vertex, again, it's in vertex form, so pretty straightforward. It's 2, negative 1. So if I have 2, negative 1, the sum of those two is going to be plus 1. And then I need to find uh, the value of uh, the y-intercept. So I'm going to plug in 0 for x, and I get 4 times 0 minus 2 squared, which is going to be minus 2 squared, which is 4. 16 minus 1, that's equal to 15. So my value plus 15. And I have a result that is equal to 19. OK, moving on to our next set of questions. <clears throat> moving on to our next set of questions. Uh, OK, so we're going to provide the sum of the following. Sum of the coordinates of the vertex, so a similar concept the minimum or maximum value, and determine if the function has a minimum or maximum value. 
if it's a min maximum value, uh, I'm sorry, it's going to be add one for a minimum value and add two for a maximum value. So here we have the first uh, quadratic function. It's going to be in vertex form. So the sum of the coordinates, I have 2 plus 7. So the sum of the coordinates is 9. My vertex is at 2, 7. So the sum of the coordinates is going to be 9. Then it's asked uh, to find the minimum or maximum value. Well, the minimum or maximum value is simply the y value of the vertex. So in this case, it's going to be plus 7 because the y value of the vertex is 7. And then determine if the function has a minimum or maximum value. Well, I know the graph opens up. So we know that the function has a minimum value. So I'm going to add plus 1. And my total is going to be 17. So 17 for the first one. Now the second one, second problem or number four might be a little bit more difficult. <clears throat> First I'm going to find the sum of the coordinates of the vertex. So conceptually this is in intercept form. Conceptually <clears throat> we know that the roots of uh, the equation are going to be negative 3 and negative 1. And that means at negative 3 or negative 1 y is going to be 0. All right? so, if we think about our zero product property, it says that anything times zero is equal to zero. And we want to find out where the graph crosses the x-axis. And the graph crosses the x-axis when the y value is at zero. So when the y value is at zero, the graph is crossing the x-axis. So we want to find out when, what values of x make y equal to zero. When I plug in negative three, I get out a zero for this term. and if I plug in negative 1, I get a 0 for this term. So negative 1 or negative 3 will make y equal to 0, which says that our roots are going to be negative 1 and negative 3. And so I know that the parabola crosses the x-axis at negative 1 and negative 3. <clears throat> now the next thing I need to do is to figure out where the vertex is. And I can determine that because I know that this is a not a very good drawing, but the graph goes through negative 3, 0, and negative 1, 0. I know that the axis of symmetry is going to run right through the center of the graph, intersect the vertex. And I know it runs right through, uh, or right in between the two points, negative 3, negative 1. And I can use a formula that I have learned, which is p plus q over 2, and the p value being negative 3, the q value being negative 1, or vice versa, over 2. So it would be negative 3 plus negative 1 over 2, or x is equal to negative 2, which is my axis of symmetry. I can also just look at the graph, and I see that the x symmetry right, runs right in between the points negative 3 and negative 1, and then figure out that the axis of symmetry is equal to x is equal to negative 2. So the vertex, the x value for the vertex is going to be negative 2. Now I need to figure out what the y value is. Well, I can do that by plugging in negative 2 for x. If I plug in negative 2 for x, if I plug in negative 2 for x, I get y is equal to negative 2 plus 3 times negative 2 plus 1, which is equal to 1 times negative 1, which is equal to negative 1. So I know that my <clears throat> vertex is going to be negative 2, negative 1. So the sum of the coordinates of the vertex, negative 2, negative 1, it's equal to negative 3. Does it have a minimum or maximum value? Well, it has, it faces up because this a value is 1, it's positive. So the graph faces up. <clears throat> so I know it has a minimum value, and that minimum value is just the y component of the vertex. So I add negative 1, I have negative 3 first, and then negative 1. And then uh, to determine if the function is a minimum or maximum value, we just said it was a minimum. So I'm going to add plus 1 for c. So I have a plus 1, a minus 1, and a minus 3. So my total for number 4 is going to be plus, excuse me, is going to be minus, minus 3. All right. Last couple questions. Rewrite the following equations in standard form. So I'm just expressing uh, the square of a term. 
and I get x minus 3 times x minus 3 plus 2, which is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 2, or x squared minus 6x plus 11. We do the same for the second one. This time, we're going to multiply 4 times x minus 2 squared, and we're going to do the multiplication after we square x minus 2. So I have 4 times x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 1, or I have 4x squared minus 16x as I distribute the 4, plus 16 minus 1, or finally 4x squared minus 16x plus 15. And that's my answer for the last problem.